What's going on guys, Tosker here and in this video we're going to cover creating a custom user control as well as using dependency properties. Now the goal of this video is we're going to create a little spoiler control that we can reuse throughout the application. Uh, so essentially we'll show spoiler and we can display a string of content or uh, it's also flexible to where we can show the spoiler, we can show other content such as rectangles or buttons or images. So without further ado, let's jump into making it. Now you may have noticed uh, my button did have a little bit of a style to it. Um, in the description below you can find a link to this code and you can just paste it in uh, over here in your app.xaml. And you can just paste it in here in your application resources. If you want to know more about styles, I do have videos on that as well. But this isn't necessary, you can just keep it a boring old button if you choose. Now back to the topic at hand, uh, if we go over here to our Solution Explorer, what we first want to do is create a custom user control. And we are going to name this custom control, spoiler control. And then now here in our custom control, what we want to do is we actually want two grids, one grid that'll be the actual content that we're hiding and then the other will be the content that is displayed over it or in front of it so it's hidden. So we'll start off with first creating a grid. Uh, we want to give this a name to later access it and we're going to call this content grid. Uh, initially it'll start off with the visibility of collapse so we want it hidden. We're then going to have a dock panel and because I don't like things hugging the edge of the control or I'm going to give it a margin of 50 and next we want a button so when we show the content we also want to be able to rehide it so we're going to create a button uh, the content of this button will say hide and then we want the dock panel to dock this to the bottom and later we're going to put in a click event so I'm just going to leave that empty for now after that we want a content control because we don't only want to display a string uh, we actually want to display a variety of elements so we'll create the content control and we'll give it a content now we're going to have to bind this later so I'm going to keep it empty for now but we also want to do a dock panel and dock it to the top now Basically, we want to repeat this process, and we also want to create a spoiler grid. So this will be the uh, grid that displays the spoiler button. And of course, we want this visibility to be visible. And open that. Uh, as we did above, we also want a dock panel with a margin of 50. But in this case, we only want a single button and the content will say show spoiler and we will also bind or uh, set this up to a click event now we see here we got a big old ugly button um, so I'm gonna go over here to our design properties and I'm gonna make this a little smaller just so it's easier to look at so 200 by uh, 400 and now we want to go over to our spoiler control code behind now what we first want to do is create a dependency property and we can actually do a quick little snippet here where we can type in prop DP and we see that we have a snippet and if we double hit tab it should generate uh, the property for us. We're going to make this an object. Um, we could make this a simple string if we'd like but because we want to use other uh, content to hide uh, we're going to make this an object and then we want to name this to secret and we also want to check down here for type of owner class so the class that owns this will be the spoiler control and you can also feel free to get rid of this comment now we see we basically have a normal uh, property here where we just get and set a certain value but you will also notice that we have a set value and a get value this is part of the dependency object so it's actually doing a little more. This isn't uh, exactly what it appears to be, just there is some stuff going on behind the scenes. 
and also notice that this is going off of a naming convention so we have our property named secret but when we set the value we're setting it of secret property as you see down here we also have the dependency property which is named that and we then of course need to register this dependency property we need to do this so we can enable things such as uh, binding and then we're going to register this uh, the secret it's a type of object uh, it's the owner of spoiler or the owner is spoiler control type and then we have new property metadata here this is essentially the default value so if we don't assign anything to the secret uh, this is what it will display we can normally do a string uh, an empty string because we usually don't want to display anything if we haven't set it but for the sake of demonstration uh, if we don't set anything it'll simply display a string of text uh, test so now we want to go over here to our spoiler control we want to go down to our events here and we actually want to create a spoiler click event and we're also going to add this down here spoiler click and now if we go over here into our properties and then uh, we find our events click we can simply double click this and it will generate our event for us and all we really want to do here is if spoiler grid which we named earlier if the visibility is visible then we want the content grid visibility to be visible and then we want the spoiler grid visibility to be collapsed and we'll also tie in an else statement here and we can copy paste this and just switch around the values so we have both buttons using the same exact event and we simply just create a little toggle feature here so now we go back to our user uh, spoiler control here um, we see we have everything set up but if you remember down here in our content control we actually have our content uh, set to nothing which means uh, even though our spoiler buttons will work uh, there's going to be nothing displayed now what we want to do with this is we actually want to use binding and we want to bind it to our secret property now the problem here is that this isn't going to necessarily work what this is going to do is this is going to try and bind to the data context of our spoiler control um, which doesn't necessarily have our secret property that we just created so if we want to set it to that we can actually scroll up here we can do this other ways but this is the way I'd prefer to do it and we'll create a name we'll call this spoiler control window actually let's just call it spoiler window and if we go down here to our content then we want to bind to a property a secret property but we want this property to be the one that exists within the element spoiler window so now we hopefully have everything set up we just go over here to our main window and we come back down here to our content which we haven't touched just yet uh, we're going to get rid of this grid and we're going to do a stack panel so we can put in multiple controls here without them overlaying we then want to create uh, we want to go to our local and find and we'll see here our spoiler control and we can simply close that off now as we see here we're gonna run the application real fast and in running our application if we hit show spoiler we'll actually see that our default value that we gave it of test displays and we can show and hide this but we actually want to do a little more than just this so going back down here uh, we can actually also because we registered this property we can actually access it in XAML and we can access the secret we could say this is a secret message um, but we don't always want to be that boring and sometimes we actually want to add or hide other content so this is where we can create another local spoiler control but we're going to open and close these tags and because now it's empty we want to access it one more time and spoiler control and now we actually want to access the property with opening and closing tags 
Now we're going to have an issue here because we haven't given it any values. Um, in this case, we're just going to give it a rectangle and we're going to fill it with red. We're going to give it a height of, let's say, 50 and a width of 50. And we'll simply close that off here. And now we're going to run our application one more time. And now running our application, we see instead of saying test, it'll now actually display the content that we passed it as a property. And if we go down here, we actually can show and hide our little rectangle. So guys, uh, that's pretty much just a shallow like toe dipping into uh, user controls and dependency properties. Um, I do have links below if you're interested in reading more, getting more information about actually maybe what's going on. Um, but as for a demonstration video, I hope I fulfilled the purpose. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and like, comment, subscribe, and do all that fun stuff. And if you'd like uh, access to this code, I should have a link in the description, uh, depending on if I got lazy after I was done recording this video, uh, below for you to get the code.